श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महान स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय एज वी जर्नी थ्रू द लाइफ बायोग्राफी ऑफ प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज इन द प्रीवियस सेशंस वी बीन लुकिंग एट प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज इज चाइल्डहुड and it's a very interesting childhood swami shri's entire life was very interesting but his childhood in particular is very fascinating because there are so many similarities about pramukh sai maharaj's childhood life just like our own lives but at the same time there were also some things that were so special about him as well and it's very interesting how you know those of us who actually experienced pramukh sai maharaj or those who know pramukh sai maharaj to be able to relate to so many aspects of his life we had finally we in the last session we got to page 29 and we will carry on from there page 29 and 30 which is actually highlighting pramukh sai maharaj's um, studies so shastri ji maharaj we we talked about last last time the difficulties the challenges that pramukh sai maharaj had uh, in trying to get to school because what had happened was their school had actually stopped and so pramukh shantilal had to go from one village to another looking for school and he had to take a year's gap and during that year pramukh sai maharaj traveled with some of some of the santos and also spent some time with shastri ji maharaj so during that year shastri ji maharaj had actually arranged for shantilal to study sanskrit under a shastri in petla so there was a there was a school in petla where the shastri was going to teach everybody sanskrit there was a haribak by the name of narayan bai and shastri ji maharaj had instructed him to look after him so this is what happened during the uh, the gap he actually spent some time studying sanskrit unfortunately for whatever reason uh, it, it was only about a month and the studies stopped so then shantilal eventually went to bochasan and there he met shastri ji maharaj again during that time moti bai pramukh sai maharaj's father was also there at that time and so they had a meeting with each other and then moti bai uh, took permission from shastri ji maharaj and shantilal ended up going back to chansad moti da, moti kaka had actually arranged uh, some schooling for shantilal in chansad so then they went back to chansad uh, but any other discussions regarding uh, taking diksha or anything were then put on hold at the, during that time so there was a school in padra that shantilal used to go to padra high school that was the school that uh, shantilal used to study which is about 6 kilometers away from where they used to live and shantilal often how did he get there he would actually take a ride a bicycle ride with two of his friends one was shankarlal and the other one was murji so these are the two friends that would actually give pramukh sai maharaj a ride all the way to school and sometimes all the way back as well so how did he get to school we discussed that that shantilal would actually take a seat uh, a travel on the on the bicycle with shankarlal and murji bhai the total journey would be about 10 to 12 kilometers sometimes shantilal would actually walk sometimes he would take uh, a bicycle ride with his friends pramukh sai maharaj often mentioned that uh, later on uh, they got a they got a bicycle and we asked him which bicycle did you get and swami said hercules hati the name of the the make of the bicycle was a hercules and swami said ke we used to get a a second hand bicycle which was about 15 to 17 rupees we couldn't afford uh, a a new bicycle which is very uh, modest of swami talking about his childhood days as well at that time so it was a second hand hercules bicycle which was only 15 rupees his friend shankar lal actually taught shantilal how to ride the bicycle so these are small details that swami often uh, shared with everybody his journey all the way to padra typically villages he would cross uh, bil chapad occasionally he would go past uh, dharapara as well once uh, some of the hari bhaktos or santos actually asked pramukh sai maharaj did you ever fall while you were learning to ride the bicycle and swami said well naturally everyone does fall once or twice and i did fall as well but i never hurt myself uh, very seriously i used to ride very slowly and very carefully and then swami mentioned that you know eventually when i did get to learn uh, the bicycle pretty well then i would also ride without uh, without my hands on the steering wheel i could con- control the bicycle that way when swami was studying in school in the school in padra 
very interesting where he used to sit in school. So Shantilal, he, generally, he would sit in the front bench of the classroom. And his friends, Daya Bhai and Umed Bhai, these were some of his friends that were sitting with him as well in the front bench. They had a teacher who was a Maharashtrian teacher. His name was Lalji Bhai Kotia. And he was their teacher at that time. What did Shantilal take for lunch? So in the Jivan Charitra explains very nicely that uh, Diwadi Bhai used to pack, give him packed lunch and occasionally he would take a Dhebra or Gauna Chopra. Sometimes he would take Vada, Athanu and uh, Gadi Puri, the sweet Puri. So these are the things he would keep with him. And Swami also used to have Swami Kekame Batak Pan Rakta, a small water bottle. So he used to keep a water bottle with him as well. School Jai, so where would he park his uh, bicycle? They didn't have any uh, bicycle stands, but Shantilal used to park his bicycle at a workshop. There was a hurry, but there was a man by the name of Raman Bhai, Ram Bhai Amin, who used to visit Chansad occasionally. So Shantilal knew this Ram Bhai. And so opposite the school, that's where his workshop was, and that's where Shantilal used to park his bicycle. It's still there today, and Shantilal would often go there during breaks for lunch uh, uh, and whenever he had his break time to have his snacks or, and ha have his meals. What subjects did Shantilal like? His favorite subjects were Gujarati, geography, history and mathematics, but in particular history and mathematics. And I think many, uh, many of us would, who've actually experienced Pramukh Sai Maharaj would know that his, uh, he, he was very good at history, had a very phenomenal memory and was able to remember the smallest of details, and Swami had a particular liking for uh, history and geography, uh, history and mathematics. Um, even Mandir accountants were very well uh, acquainted with his uh, mathematical skills. He was very, very quick with, with maths. One particular interesting fact that uh, some of us might know, some of you might not know, when Swami used to fly from one country to another country, normally, you know, in the, in the, in the front, in the seat, we would have the uh, there would always be a magazine. And in the magazine, they would have these books. And in the book, there would always be a map of the, the journeys that the, plane would, the planes would normally take. Pramukh Sai Maharaj would study those maps a lot. He loved looking at those maps as well. So we could see that he had a genuine industry, uh, interesting, interest in geography as well. Pramukh Swami was once asked that, um, do you have any particular memories from what you studied in school? And Swami, for those of those of you who actually studied in, in India or in Gujarat would remember the poems O Ishwar Bhajiye Tane Motu Chetu Janam. That was one particular poem that Pramukh Sai Maharaj remembered a lot. And there were other sayings like Mama Nu Ghar Ketle, Divo Bade Etle. Swami Ghani Vakhat Avibadi Vastu Yad Karta Tha. Then even how they did mathematical tables and different formulae they would remember. So there were some very nice um, poems or verses that they would use to remember these things. I'll say this. Ek sava e sava, ladwa khava, ladwa khava java, ladwa ma padi kadi, ne be sava e adi. Ek sava e sava, ladwa khava java, ladwa ma padi kadi, ne be sava e adi. These were different methods that they were taught in school, how to remember uh, fractions and other mathematical tables. Swami said, jetla rupya e man, itla ane adi share. Paya, Ardha, Dorda, Savaya, Adhya, Ne Untha. So these are the things that Swami would often remember many years later. Uh, when it was regarding English, Swami Shantilal did show a liking towards uh, English. His friend Shankarlal and other friends had actually proposed and suggested that we might want to study English and you should study English as well. So Shantilal did express uh, an interest in studying English. So this was his uh, education that we just looked at. Again, what, was his, what were his uh, interests as a young child? What sort of things, how did they pass their time? What did, they do, what did they do for fun? They didn't have video games back then. But in particular, there was a, um, there was a village lake, a very small lake uh, in, in Chansad. And that's where they used to swim. Shantilal was a very good swimmer. Um, we'd seen, many of us have even seen Pramukh Sai Maharaj even in the later years, was very good, very, very proficient uh, swimmer, but unmatched they say, back then as well. He would swim from one end of the village lake to the other without, without break or fatigue. He, just like he could swim lengths, he could also swim depths. Uh, Ganivar, 
you know, sometimes they would drop some pots or things like that into the well, into the uh, into the lake, and Shantilal was able to retrieve those things as well. So he would often talk about this, and when they would reminisce uh, about pastimes in Chansad, in the village, when the lake filled up due to the rains, the village chief would often go there to often pujan, and you know they would they would throw coconuts as a mark of respect into the village lake. At that time, the young boys would actually race amongst themselves and to see who could actually swim the fastest and receive the coconuts. So all the guys would actually, we can see a very similar image over here of the boys racing. And Swami would often recollect and say that there was another boy, his name was Chotu. He was a very good swimmer. Normally, either me or him, we would actually uh, get there. But Swami would often, Swami said that Chotu was a faster swimmer than I was. So Shantila would often enter into these kind of competitive races just like any other teenage boy back in, the, back in the day as well. While bathing in this lake, there was a time when Shantilal actually sustained some minor in injuries in his legs in two different places. And those marks remained visible throughout. Even in the later years, people could see uh, those similar marks. Maharaj has said in one of the Vachitamras as well, similarly when Bhagwan Swaminarayan was in Chapaya, and when he used to play, he fell off a tree and the bark of the tree actually hurt him at that time. And Maharaj Ghaniwar said that when we were in the morning, we were in the morning, we were in the morning, and we were in the morning, and we Just something that we could connect with Bapa as well, just a nice memory from Bapa's life as well. He was also a very good cricket player. The cricket place, their cricket field, there was a, there was a medical clinic just entering the village. And opposite that, there was a large playing field. That was their cricket field. And that's where I think Shantilal used to score lots of fours and sixes. Uh, back then when they were playing cricket as well. But Swami often said, Ke ame cricket ramta. we were interested in playing cricket, we love playing cricket, but not to the extent that it dominated our lives. It wasn't just like a full-time thing. Swami goes, one or two months in a year we would play, not more than that. And then one occasion Swami also mentioned that just like how kids play football today, Swami said, we also used to make a ball made of cloth. And Swami said, I would run with that, but nobody could catch up with me. He seemed like a pretty good football player back then as well. There was a, a big tree uh, near the Hanman Madi. And it, it was a big Amblinwek Jhadatu. And that was basically a playing field for them as well. So Shantilal was often, and his friends, they would go there to play as, uh, a lot of the times as well. And they played games like Bhamarda, that's the tops, Pachi Marbles, Pachi Hututu, Ko, Amli Pipri. Catch. These are the kind of games that they would play. They would play as as little kids as well. One interesting fact about Shantilal's life and his childhood, uh, his playing mainly Pramukh Sai Maharaj was right-handed. However, an interesting fact was he played marble with marbles with with his left hand. So you could say he was ambidextrous in 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 that aspect. So Savya Sachin, expertise in many fields. Pramukh Swami was very good at that. Um, Flying kites, that was another pastime during the kite season. Swami said that we would, they would often climb the roofs of the houses within the village. They enjoyed flying the kites. Swami would also say, just like other kids, they would fly the kites high up. And if he came into contact with somebody else, and Swami would reminisce a lot on that as well. So they would, you know, uh, firecrackers, playing with firecrackers as well. One particular thing that Swami mentioned many times as well, and it's in the Jivan Charitra also, was sometimes some people would come from a bigger city and they would have a box. And in that box, they would have pictures. So you have to look into that picture. Uh, you could call it a, a 1920s, 1930s movies, movie theater or something like that. But it was like a box. And in that box, they would have pictures of Mumbai, pictures of Delhi. And Swami would often say that we would have, everybody had to pay. They would have to pay two or three paisa together to watch the show. And then the guy would show them, Jo Delhi, Dekho Delhi, Dekho Mumbai. Swami Ghani Vakat Karta Just to watch those pictures as well. So that's another pastime that the kids would have uh, back then. So we can see that he was a very good sportsman, but a sportsman without ambition. You know, nothing that I want to excel, get so high up. 
a student without an ego, very kind-hearted and a gentle personality. They asked Swamishi once, did you ever get into competitions regarding um, food e eating competitions? And Swami goes, no, nah, I he never interested in those kind of competitions. But sporting, he was a good, sports person, good sportsman. As we move on to page 35 and 37, this is a big turning point in Pramukh Swami Maharaj's life. Shastriji Maharaj had once come to Chansad and, and ar around that time, Shantilal was actually studying in the sixth year and they had this six monthly exams at that time. And Shastriji Maharaj had come to the mandir at that time. Shantilal and his family went to meet Shastriji Maharaj at the mandir. And it's at that time that uh, Shastriji Maharaj said to Shantilal, you have to become a sadhu. So Shantilal willingly agreed, but also replied to Shastriji Maharaj, um, what do you want me to do? What should I do about my studies? He inquired to Swami, what should I do about my studies? And then Shastriji Maharaj said, you know what, I'll take you to Amdavad. There is a teacher over there, Vinayak Bhai Karine Kari Bhakta, the Vinayak Rao Trivedi. So Shastriji Maharaj said, Vinu Bhai's high school is in Amdavad, and Khengarji Bhai Master will teach you there. He'll teach you and Akshar Jivan Swami. Akshar Jivan Swami at that time was known as Gurdan Bhai. So he'll teach both of you and you can do your school there while you, after you've taken Diksha. So Shantilal agreed. And Shantilal then told Moti Bhai as well, okay, we've come here to take your son as well. In exchange, Matha Satu, Matha. Meaning that what had happened was, historically in, in the past, Shantilal's elder brother, Nandu, had also become a sadhu and taken Diksha by Shastriji Maharaj. His name was Hari Sevadas. And he had stayed in Gondal, in Yogi Bapa's Seva. In fact, when Yogi Ji Maharaj had undergone the, the operation for the hernia in Mumbai, uh, Hari Sevadas, that is Pramukh Sai Maharaj's elder brother, he was there in uh, Yogi Bapa's Seva. But things didn't work out and then eventually Hari, das, Hari Sevadas, he came back home and then he started looking after the farm. And Shastri Ji Maharaj had said that in this way, in the, at that point. He had, he had his eyes set on uh, Shastri Ji Maharaj, um, Pramukh Sai Maharaj at that time as well. So then eventually that's why he said, Ke shanti lal ne ame le jasu. And he took permission from him to take him to become a sadhu. Many years later, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was asked a question. That from your childhood, which is the one memory that you instantly recollect regarding Shastri Ji Maharaj? And Swami Shri immediately replied that when he came into Chansa, when he came into the village, Mandir, and he told me, I remember him telling me, Ke tare sadhu che. So that was one very powerful memory from the life of uh, Pramukh Sai Maharaj. However, it happened that they were supposed to, uh, the, exams had, the exams weren't over. Shastri Ji Maharaj had said, Ke mare tane sadhu karvo che. And kya re karvo che? So he said, now. But what had happened was, Shastri Ji Maharaj had to immediately leave at that time. He got a telegram from the village of Ghana. There was a Naran, Hari Bhak by the name of Naran Bhai who sent him a telegram. So immediately Shastri Ji Maharaj had to leave. And so he told Gansham Swami, Ke tame Shanti Lal ne lai jajo. You, tame Shanti Lal ne lai ne nikdi jajo. So you leave with Shanti Lal. And he told Gansham Swami, Ke you leave with Shanti Lal and bring him with you. But Gansham Swami had to rush off to Bhaili at that time. So then Shantilal was left, left hanging and he was post exams and there wasn't a clear decision of what to do. So Shantilal carried on with his schooling and other activities at that time. There was a Hari Bhak, there was a man by the name of Raman Bhai who used to come there from Padra, a village nearby Padra. And he used to come there to work in Chansad. At that time he had some cricket equipment with him and he would normally gather all the children, all the boys together with him to play cricket at that time. And so they all loved playing because he had the equipment. That's when these guys got introduced to cricket and they started playing cricket at, uh, during that year. They continued to play cricket for that year. But then Raman Bhai then ended up leaving. And so he, with him, the equipment also, uh, he took the equipment, cricket, cricket equipment with him as well. So then they were left hanging. They needed something else to do. So they collected some funds from the village and they decided to purchase uh, new equipment. So all the boys collected all the funds. They decided to buy the equipment. Where did you buy the equipment from? They had to go all the way to Vadodara at that time. So then they collected the money, about 100 rupees or so. Who was going to go to buy the equipment? And amongst all of them, they decided and they chose Shantilal because they trusted him, one with the money, and so that he could probably haggle the price down from 100 rupees to around 60 rupees. So that was the deal at that time. Eventually, it was decided that Shantilal and Shankarlal would actually go to Vadodara to buy the equipment. 
as they were about to leave, suddenly Rauji Bhai, another friend of theirs, came from Bhaili. And with him, he brought a letter with him. This was a letter written by Shastriji Maharaj. So event, initially, Rauji Bhai went home, but he noticed that uh, Shantilal wasn't at home. So then he went to see where the boys were gathered, where they'd gathered for their meeting to buy the cricket equipment. And then he presented the letter to Shantilal. So Shantilal saw the letter. It was from Shastriji Maharaj. And the letter that had been written was asking Shantilal to leave home and to become a sadhu. It's time for you now to leave home and become a sadhu. So immediately, as soon as he heard this news, Shantilal said, good, I'm ready. Let's go. So Shantilal told his friends that, look, Shastriji Maharaj has written a letter to me. Now I have to go to become a sadhu. So all the friends were shocked. What do you mean now? And he goes, yes, now. Can't you wait a little bit longer? Let's finish this game off, go buy the equipment and everything. But because the letter was there from Shastriji Maharaj and the Agna was there, so immediately he prepared everything and then he decided to go home. His friends were devastated. They were all shocked that, uh, that our friend is going to leave us because obviously Shantilal was a very popular child in, uh, in Chansad. But because Shastriji Maharaj ni Agna thai, so immediately he left home. He went home and... At the time, he told his parents as well, that Shastri Ji Maharaj no letter ravi hoche, so it's time to leave. Now, Shantilal, the atmosphere at home was interesting at that time. When you know that your child is about to leave to become a sadhu, and this is the last time that you're going to see him, you can just imagine what the mood could have been. However, Shantilal's family was a very pious, very devout satsangi family. His mother and his father were very strong satsangis. His mother was completely dedicated to Shastri Ji Maharaj. And, you know, one would have thought that the state of the affairs at the house would have been very glo gloomy, very sad. However, it, the situation was very different. In the house, you could see the joy because the parents were very excited that their child was now going to, to embark on a very special journey and dedicate his life in the seva of Shastriji Maharaj. In fact, it was a very auspicious environment at that time. No fanfare or anything, any such thing as that, but just the atmosphere was very... Um, the parents were very blessing giving their blessings as well. And so the father was very eager to obey, you know, Adishin Sami has written it very nicely, that the father was very eager to obey Shastriji Maharaj's Agna. The mother was very eager to serve Shastriji Maharaj in this way. And the son was also very eager to serve his guru in this way. Because for all of them, their guru was the central point of their lives. It's a very rare and exceptional moment. It was Asovad Ekadashi. That was the date, the Tithi. It was in Ekadashi, somewhat year 1995. Moti Bhai at that time gave his blessings and he said to, Shas and he said to uh, Shantilal, okay, you know, he, he gave his blessings and he says, look, always stay with Shastriji Maharaj. No matter what happens, stay with Shastriji Maharaj. Make sure you tolerate whatever difficulties come that way. But Shastriji Maharaj ne raji karje. Diwari Ba gave similar Rashirvads and saying, come what may, Shashi Maharaj Raji Thai ne emaj karje. Pramukh Sai Maharaj many often had said this as well. Once Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in uh, Orlando in a shibir and they asked him to recollect all these incidences. At that time, Pramukh Sai Maharaj said that from the beginning, I was told that Shashi Ji Maharaj Raji Thai ne emaj tu karje. And so those are the, and we can see that throughout his entire life, no matter what had happened, no matter what difficulties he faced, there was one particular thought that he had in, in the back of his mind. Then around between 9 and 9.30, Shastri Ji Maharaj Raji Thai ne emaj mare Then around between 9 and 9.30, Shantilal very casually bid his uh, family farewell and he left Chansad. Must have been a very sad day for the rest of the people in Chansad. Yet it was a very auspicious day because that's the day when we, the world, got Shantilal, I've got Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Shantilal's departure was only four days before Diwari. Now this is very interesting to hear. It was only four days before Diwari. Normally people would say, why? they asked Pramukh Sai Maharaj once, Don't, didn't you want to spend your time with your family four days before Diwari? And Pramukh Sai Maharaj very casually replied, okay, we often say, okay, din din Diwari, Raj Mare, din din Diwari. For me, Shastriji Maharaj's Agna was Diwari. And that's why Swami left. Otherwise, these were very festive days. But for him, festivity was being with, Shast with his Guru Shastriji Maharaj. And leaving home was such a... It was just so natural. Nothing, no big deal, no fanfare, no months of planning, 
no deep thinking, no contemplation, no emotional you know, environment. It was just so s simple and straightforward, which shows a lot about their connection with their Guru Shastriji Maharaj. But they had barely got to the outskirts of the village and Shantilal suddenly, because he was riding with his friend, and suddenly he remembered, Ke puja bhuli gyo I forgot my puja. So then they go back home, he collected his puja, and again, without a moment of hesitation, no second thoughts, and Swami then uh, left. So years later, they asked Swami, did you have any thoughts in your mind when you were leaving home? And Swami said, no, there was no question about it. There was no force, nothing like that. I just left home. Adashi and Swami gives some very nice, uh, and he says that when you look at the Ganga River flowing from its source in Gaumuk, who would have ever guessed that this very stream was subsequently going to result in a huge river, river source, which is going forward, spreading greenery in millions of hectares, creating plains of fertile land with silt, and quenching the thirst of millions of people across wherever it flowed. Pramukh Sai Maharaj's departure from home was something similar, a very simple departure. Yet, he was going to embrace, embrace the rest of the world and giving comfort, comfort to millions of people, changing the lives of millions of people that he came across. As we move on to page 41 and 43, this was an interesting journey. Because now Shantilal had left home, there was only one goal, to meet his Guru Shastriji Maharaj. He was determined to get there as soon as possible. However, the first stop was Bhaili, and it wasn't going to be as easy as it seemed. He first stopped at Bhaili. There, he was just supposed to go to Bochasan, because that's where they were going to celebrate Diwari. But on the 8th of November, the following day, they reached another village called Sakarda. That's where he met Gansham Swami. Now all the Hari Bhaktas in Sakarda requested Gansham Swami, why don't you just stay here? You're only three days away from Ankot. Celebrate Ankot with us. So then he celebrated Ankot there. It was only three days away, but Gansham Swami stayed there. But then he told Shantilal to go to Bochasan. And he said, Tu Bochasan ja, anityanthi badi mithai le Go to Bochasan and bring all the sweets back with you. So then Shantilal decided to go to Bochasan. There was a Hari Bhagat by the name. There was a Bhagat by the name of Shankar Bhagat. So Shankar Bhagat dropped Shantilal to Ranoli Station. From Ranoli Station, Shantilal went all the way to Bochasan. There he met Nirgun Swami, and Nirgun Swami asked Shantilal to stay back because he wanted to carry on. Nirgun Swami then told him to. Nirgun Swami told Shantilal to stay back. So Shantilal said, look, I have to take Prasad back with me. And Nirgun Swami said, look, I'll make all those arrangements for you. I need you to stay over here. So Shantilal then eventually ended up staying in Bochasan. And Nirgun Swami sent a Hari Bhakt, uh, Ishwar Bhagat back with him. He said, at least sweets tamay leja jo. Nirgun Swami said, look, Shastriji Maharaj is coming to Amdavad in Kartik Ekadashi. You stay with me until then. And then we'll, I'll take you all the way. I'll take you to Bocha, I'll take you to Amdavad. And we can meet Shastriji Maharaj over there. This whole journey, Shastriji, uh, Shantila left home, little did he know that he was going to meet Shastriji Maharaj 15 days away. And that 15 days was a grueling travel because Nirgun Swami, traveling with Nirgun Swami was no easy feat because he was very busy, didn't have much time, constantly from one village to another village to another village, lots of meetings going on at that time. And Nirgun Swami's schedule was so hectic, on the 11th hour he could say, let's go. And you'd have to be ready and leave. And so Nirgun Swami you know, traveled, but during those 15 days, Shantilal, when they got to Nadiad, Shantilal fell ill. And eventually he had a high fever. He lost appetite, wasn't able to eat, didn't want to drink anything. But see, they gave him some milk at that time and a little bit of pepper at that time. Dood and mari. No mixture happy, but see, Shantilal ne te wakate pirai utu. He felt a little bit better after two or three days when they left Nadiad. Then eventually, on the 21st of November, they got to Amdavad, which was Kartak Sud Dasam. And they stayed at a place called Amliwali Pod in a Hari Bhakta's house. Babu Bhai, the Hari Bhakta's name was Babu Bhai. So Babu Bhai na ghare upla maade elokotya rayata. Now Shastriji Maharaj at that time, Amliwali Pod near the Ravya, he ratre to Shastriji Shantilal switch gaya. He went to sleep that night. And Shastriji Maharaj, when he came, he saw that Shantilal is not well. And as soon as Shastriji Maharaj found out, he went straight up to meet him and met Shantilal with affection 
uh, gave him a lot of love and affection, a lot of care, asked him if he had eaten, and Shantilal then explained everything that had happened. Shantilal, uh, Shastriji Maharaj gave a lot of comfort to Shantilal at that time because Shantilal started crying at that time when he saw uh, Shastriji Maharaj. He was overcome with emotion because you can imagine he was very tired, very exhausted and very ill and then he suddenly sees the destination. Shastri, he saw Shastriji Maharaj so he broke down. He was in tears at that time. But she gently he went to sleep. Shastri Maharaj ki do ke chinta nahi karto baddu mati jase. Eventually the fever subsided and then the next day when uh, Shastriji Maharaj woke Shantilal up the next day and then we will carry on the, the story in the next session. Right now we'll come to the end of today's uh, session. Shri Swaminarayan Bhagavan Ani Jai.